Hey guys, it's Wild Honey, aka your girl Honey Pepper. <laughs> okay, listen, guys, I just want to come on here and briefly talk about um, something that I think is very important that people should start talking about, and that is um, being honest when you recognize somebody might be expressing feelings for you that you may not necessarily feel for them. First of all, I want to say that the person who may be expressing feelings to someone should be discerning and also be accepting of what the answer to that might be, whether spoken or unspoken. This is where the Zoom man comes in. So let me break that down. You might be f having very strong feelings for someone. And that person has not necessarily said that they, do they don't feel the same way. But they will continue to engage you and maybe repeat some of the same affection that you show them and you will hope, be holding on to false hope, hoping that, you know, this is something that is going to grow or they are starting to feel or actually feel the way you feel about them. Guys, we have to be honest with ourselves and very discerning. You have to be able to tell the difference between false hope and reality. The way you can tell that is to analyze the way you feel from what the person is doing. So you might feel like your person that will give this the person who you expressing this feelings for all your time, love, affection, communication, support, respect, and everything, right? And this is what you want in return. You would start acting that way towards the person, actually giving them a lot of time, affection, respect, support, and all of that. But what you will find is that that person, in some cases, is not doing the same. And if they are uh, a selfish person, I'll just say a selfish person in this case, they may do something called intermittent reinforcement where they know exactly how you feel about them, but they don't, they know that they don't feel the same way about you, but they want you in their life still because it's to them a relationship with you will be a transaction, something transactional. So maybe you are a good ego stroker and you make that person look good in front of other people, right? Or you may have financial status or prominence or something that makes this person who you have genuine affection for wants you to stick around. So they would go in between acts of rudeness and acts of kindness, right? And you are so hopeful and so in love with this person. So you think that um, the bare minimum that they give you, you are holding on to in hopes that they will eventually see who you truly are and fall head over heels for you. Guys, this is highly unlikely to happen in the cases of intermittent reinforcing, intermittent reinforcement, which is just a fancy term for breadcrumbing. Guys, I don't know all of the, the psychological terms for this, these are things that I'm still learning myself. So <laughs> I might be using too much words and talking too much to describe what I'm trying to say, but just try to follow me on this, right? This is why I'm saying to you guys, 
you have to analyze how you feel versus what you are getting from the person that you want this love, time, and affection for. Are you being breadcrumbed? Are you getting the bare minimum? Are you holding on to this bare minimal act of kindness until the next act of kindness, which could be months from the first act, to give yourself false hope into thinking that this person will eventually fall for you. Guys, you have to be honest with yourself. This is not how you would treat that person, right? That person who you genuinely love. Remember, you have you are analyzing the way you feel versus how they are treating you. And if it were you, you would be giving them all your time, love, energy, love, respect, attention, communication, all those kinds of kinds of things. And you are not receiving that. <clears throat> This is when you have to be honest to yourself and recognize that this person does not feel the same way about you and is highly unlikely to go ahead and feel that same way about you. Secondly, I'd like to say that the person who is doing this, right? You will, you may say it's me. I will use myself. If I recognize that a person is expressing deep feelings for me that I may not necessarily have for that person, right? I think that I should be discerning enough. You know, I'm saying that anybody who is in my shoes, I'm just using myself as an example, you should really be discerning enough to recognize that this person is expressing feelings to you that you do not feel. And I think it's incumbent upon you at that time to be very clear and honest with that person. I'm not saying to put the person on a spot and blow them up in front of people and say, well, you know, I don't feel the same way about you. I have a certain type and you don't fit in that type of person or whatever you want to say to them. But you can be discerning and maybe it's a private conversation to clarify things between the both of you all that will, you know, diffuse any kind of, you know, uncomfortable situation for you, you guys in the future. Essentially, all I'm saying is to be discerning and to be honest with the person on both ends. The person who is expressing this this type of feelings to the person who may not necessarily feel that way about you, be honest with yourself and recognize that this person doesn't feel that way about you. And be willing to accept that. If it's a conversation you need to have with that person, you need to have that conversation. And the same thing on the other end. If you are a person who are getting feelings expressed to yourself that you don't feel the same way about the person who may be expressing that to you, you need to be discerning and honest with that person that you do not feel the same way about them. That that doesn't mean that you don't like the person as a person, but that you are not interested in, you know, having a relationship with them or having any kind of future um, prospects with them at all, right? And that could be a private conversation or something, some something that will allow the person to to know that you don't feel the same way about them in a discreet manner. So guys, it's time that we start being more honest and more forthright with um with people and with ourselves, right? Being honest and being forthright is not to say to be rude, disrespectful, um unkind, uncaring, not discerning, um incompassionate or any of those negative things. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying to have an honest conversation with yourself and with that person, right? That would allow for you all to still have a good relationship if 
you know, that is possible. Or for you all to part ways, but part ways with no kind of resentment or, um, you know, bad, bad feeling between the both of you. Because that's not going to make, you know, that's not going to make both of you all happy in the end. You know, guys, so this conversation I'm having here is just all about, guys, let's be honest with each other and let's let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be willing to accept whatever the um the answer is to the the to what we are hoping for. And I call that in my own Lehman terms radical. <laughs> I mean it, radical acceptance is really a psychological term that they use, but in my own Lehman terms of explaining it, it's just saying that to accept what you cannot control or you cannot change, right? So practice radical acceptance. If you the answer is no, that you are not this person type. You can't possibly make yourself fit into their type, right? Because their type might be something or somebody that's physically different from you in every way. It could be a completely different race of person. And you can't help but be the race that you are, right? Doesn't mean that the person is prejudiced. It's just everybody have a type, you know? So, and especially when it comes down to um, being um, romantically involved or interested in somebody. It just is what it is. And that's where you have to practice radical acceptance, right, guys? But the problem comes in in where a person isn't honest and are using you as a transaction, you know, a transactional things or relationship just to, you know, feed their, um, their ego or keep their position, their prominent positions and people in other people's eyes. That's where things can get a little bit messy, you know, you not willing to let go of the false hope that this person is not going to change their preference at all. And, they will be nice and kind to you, but they will never be interested in you the way you are interested in them. So that is where it can also get a little bit messy when you don't want to be honest with yourself and practice radical acceptance. I hope you guys <laughs> understood what, I, what I'm trying to say to you guys. Um, I definitely have to improve my communication skills. I have never really spoken to myself on camera. I talk to myself all the time around, <laughs> around the house and stuff. I'm not crazy, guys. You guys do that. Don't lie to yourself, <laughs> you know? But to get on camera and do it is a very difficult thing because I know this information is going to reach people and I'm trying to put it across in a way that people would understand and get get the gist, get the point of what I'm saying, you know, and not focus on anything else that might be distracting in the video, but to focus on what the point of the video is, which is, guys, we need to be honest with ourselves and honest with each other. So I hope that came through. Claire, I know I used a lot of words and fillers and all of that stuff. But guys, if you're discerning, you can get the point of this video. Okay, guys. So I'm going to love you all and leave you all. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys.